turn our Bible to Revelation 22, verse 4 to 7. Heaven is a proper shining place, so make sure you go there. Revelation 22, 4 to 7. We are um, on our topic, prepare to meet your God. And today we are going to be because of what Jesus said about the agency of the times. What Jesus said. Now most of the scriptures I'm going to read, if your Bible is a real King James Bible, you see those words are written in red. And anytime you see, you have to be very attentive because this is Jesus himself speaking. Revelation 22, 4 to 7. One of the things you have to understand that all that we are doing in church, coming, fasting, praying, coming every day, praying, fasting, working, winning souls, is to get us prepared to our ultimate eternal home. The ultimate of all that we are doing is to get us to our eternal home, and that is heaven. A lot of Christians don't have the idea of heaven, but let's read Revelation 22, 4, 7. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. And they need no candle, neither light of the sun. For the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Some of the verses say they shall reign as kings. So we are not going to heaven as slaves. We are going as kings. That's why no matter what is happening to you on earth, don't care. Sacrifice. Go through if you have to drink Gary without sugar, drink it. When you get to the other side, you are there not as a third class citizen, as some ignoramuses on earth have separated us. First world, second world. There's nothing like that in the calendar of God. The Bible said they shall reign as kings. They shall reign. And he said unto me, See, these things are faithful and true. And the Lord God of the holy prophet sent his angel to show unto his servant the things which must be shortly done. Shortly means very quickly it's going to happen. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he that keepeth the sayings of this prophecy, of this book. Behold, I come quickly. Blessed is he. So all the things that are being taught. Blessed are those who keep them. To guide their life. And to walk accordingly. So Jesus told us. To be prepared. And here he was talking about heaven. No light. No candle. You don't need any electricity. It's a city every believer. Must make up his mind to sacrifice everything. That's why we don't give up as we serve God. Because we are going to a place. That is going to be the final reward of every sacrifice you have ever given. And I want you to know that many are sacrificing for nonsense. You sacrifice for football, it is useless. You sacrifice for politics, it is useless. You sacrifice for... The only sacrifice that is meaningful is sacrificing for God. Because the end result is priceless and it is so powerful and it is so glorious. So people coming to church shouldn't complain. People giving offerings shouldn't complain. After all, how much have you given? And how much has the Lord given to you? There is a place. There is a hope. Greater than every hope. And everybody must put his mind there. Maybe you are a preacher. You are going through that. You are a Christian. You are going through this. He said, blessed are those. Keep the words of this book. Anything he told us to do, let's keep and do them. Because there is a place. Even though God blesses us on earth, it's not the ultimate. Your car cannot be the ultimate. It's just something to just help you to just move around. The ultimate is something that the earth cannot buy. The earth cannot... Is it what God wants to give to the believer? The earth cannot offer him. That is why you don't sacrifice your Christianity for papers. You don't sacrifice your Christianity for other things because there is no city that has no night. But one day there's going to be a city where there is no night. Where you don't need a light. Now these are the promises he has given us. And this must be the thing driving you. Driving you. Sugar daddy or sugar puppy, you don't need it. Let this thing drive you. 
if you have to if you have to drop many things in your life to make it into this city it will be the wisest decision you've ever taken in your life now jesus told us to prepare for this beautiful place by using several parables matthew 24 i'm going to read a lot of scriptures today because i want to bring your mind i want to remind you of many things so you don't give up cheaply you don't sacrifice your life cheaply for things that are not important now matthew 24 36 and 38 he said but of the day and the hour knoweth no man not the angels of heaven but my father only so there is an agency that jesus is going to come at a time when nobody is watching but as the days of noah were so shall be so shall also the coming of the son of man be for as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage are we still doing them yes today there's going to be another marriage uh, but i hope we will finish for them to go to their honeymoon before jesus comes until the day that noah entered into the ark noah was announcing destruction is coming they said we don't care destruction is coming they said we don't mind and noah shouted for 120 years every day water is coming people will be laughing as they are laughing today as they are repeating their ignorance today i don't care about church i don't care about this i don't care about it let me tell you something don't be too proud the world you live in you did not create even your nose you didn't create it there is nothing about you that is for you that's why you can sleep tonight tomorrow morning when you wake up your body is wobbled because there are things that are controlling us and the one that controls the world is telling you that one day destruction is coming turn to somebody and say be wise and look out 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 they did not give attention oh we've been hearing jesus is coming for how long will he be coming verse 44 verse 44 i'm in matthew 24 therefore be ye also ready for in such an hour as ye think not the son of man cometh be ye also ready all choristers who sing in the choir oh uh, pastor you know uh, my boyfriend said he's going to take me to dubai when we return i will be serious christian on your way going on your way going there, there, are, there are people who go to church who have decided that they will stop certain sins after a certain time. They've given themselves a timetable. I will stop stealing by the end of March. By the end of April. You don't have that option. Therefore be ye also ready. For in such an hour as ye think not, the Son of Man cometh. You know this titan thing they be preaching about me i've decided by next year this next year june i will start titan be ye ready and do you know that all the tithes that you paid god is going to ask you he's going to put a record for you to show that the amount of tithe you have given is not equivalent to the number of weeks you have bought many people when they get money they become proud this is my money. This is your money. You better shut up. It's not your money. You didn't come from your mother's womb with money. You pick it on earth. And anything you pick it on earth, somebody put it here before you came. Somebody put it here before you came. So let me drive the stupidity out of your brains. Somebody put it here. The Bible said the Lord planted a garden before he put in Adam. Except you start your own creation story where Adam will come before the garden. The Lord planted the garden. He decorated it before he brought in the man. So everything we have on earth, we pick it. He prepared it before he brought you. So you don't owe anything. You are just a caretaker. Don't be too proud to destroy you. Be humble and know. That's why the Bible says, a fool has said there is no God. But there is a God. So that same God is telling you, be ready. Be ready. One day I'm going to come. 
and the time that you think not, that is when I'm going to come. This is Jesus talking to them because they are asking questions. Where will the second coming come? You say you come, whatever, when are you going to come? Now, another story in the Bible that you read that is so very powerful is when Jesus told them that the Jerusalem temple will be pulled down. The people got angry. They said, how can you, how can you say such a thing? Because that Jerusalem temple, they started building it 20 BC and they finished at 64 AD. So it took them almost 40 something years. And according to them, it was so beautiful that they never thought that it could be pulled down. But Jesus said to them, because he tells them that he does not dwell in temples built by men. So no matter how nice your house is, no matter how nice your car is, some of you, your, your bodily house is very beautiful. Because every day you buy Versace cream and then you cream it. Dolce Cabana hairstyle. And then every day you are decorating this body. But I want you to know, it doesn't mean so much to God as your spirit. So the most, the most important thing you need to work on is your soul. Your soul. Your soul. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world which you can also even gain? Which if you gain the whole world and lose your soul. So working on your soul and getting ready for his coming is very paramount to every wise believer. Matthew 25. Another parable he told us to get us ready. Matthew 25. We have shared that one last uh, about a few weeks ago in Sunday school. Then shall the kingdom of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took lambs and went forth to meet the bridegroom. Five of them were wise and five were foolish. Now, the difference between the wise ones and the foolish ones is not their education. It's their readiness and their unreadiness. Virgins means probably all of them were believers. But some were ready. Others were not ready. And they that were fully took lambs and took no oil with them, but the wise took oil in their vessels with their cans. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. Tell somebody, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. And at midnight there was a cry made, behold, the bridegroom come and go out to meet him. This is Jesus himself telling us the stories. And then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lambs. And, um, and the foolish said unto the wise, give us of your oil, for our lambs are gone out. But the wise answered, say, not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But go ye rather to them that sell and buy for yourself. Husbands don't serve God for their wives. Wives don't serve God for their husbands. Children don't serve God for their fathers. Fathers don't serve God for their children. Buy for yourself. Buy, 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 buy. Serve for yourself. Fast for yourself. Pay tight for yourself. Be a soul winner for yourself. Be a kingdom promoter for yourself. Live holy for yourself. No one can live for you. And what they went into by the brand new came and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage and the door was shut. May the door never be shut against any holy healer here. Afterward also came the other verse and said, Lord, open unto us. Look at verse 12. But he answered and said, Very I say unto you, I know you not. So is it possible to be in church all your days, sing in the choir all your days, preach from Genesis to Revelation and still be shut out of the door? Yes. Jesus is saying so. Watch therefore, for ye know neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Another caution. Watch therefore. If you want to join the prayer team, join. If you want to join Aquaba, join. If you want to be serious, be serious. Don't be postponing the things of God. Oh, today I'm going to do that. Today I'm going to do that. You know when, you know, many of you are here, you can sing, but you never join the choir. There are small, small girls who are singing. Hey, how can singing for God be a job of small, small girls? How can doing any, who made you so big like this? That you cannot even fit into this temple. Who made you so big that there is something in church you feel that you are too big to do? For which God? Is it for this big God or the God in your village? Everything you want to do, do it now. Do it now. A gentleman was invited to church many times. He never went. But one day he went to church. But that day he was in church. They sang. He couldn't sing. 
Everybody was dancing. He couldn't dance. They gave offering. He was silent. The pastor made an altar call. He couldn't lift his hands. But he was in church. But he was in church in a coffin. It was his coffin they brought to church. That day the church was very powerful. But he couldn't participate. May that day never come upon you. I said, may that day never come upon you. Watch your friend and give him a blow and say, be ready, blow, blow him. Be ready. If you have to blow him for him to say whoosh and go to heaven, blow him twice. My God. <laughs> Some people, when you talk, there's a man of God. Do you know the pain I'm going through? You are going through pain. You, you are going through pain. Test the one that is coming. Test the one that is coming. Apostle Dodi, can you give me um, a just short video of molten magna from a volcano eruption? Try and give me an image. So Jesus is talking to us. He used the story of the virgins. He has used Matthew 24. What do the church need again? Then Jesus told us another parable. Now, in this parable, he spoke about the reality of heaven and hell. Don't let any foolish broadcaster tell you there is no hell. Some people, when they get microphone to sit on radio and television, so, so foolish things they are talking about. There's no heaven. There's no hell. This is a volcano erupting. And fire, you see, the yellow portion is fire. The red portion, some of you say, fire cannot melt. You see melting fire now. And the Bible talks about the lake of fire. This one they are extremely small. The other one coming is a lake. Swimming fire. This is the image of mortal. And you see, this one is natural. The lake of fire is God made. And you know, his everything is advanced. Advanced from now. They say fire never melts. One day fire is going to melt. He said, What's one shit? That's why you are following sugar daddy. Try this one. There are many things that have stolen people's life that they don't need, but they think they need them. The Bible said it's going to melt. Matthew, Luke chapter 16. Luke 16. And if you have believed the scriptures that talk about blessing, you must believe the scriptures that talk about hell. It's in the same book. It's in the same book. If you have believed that your mother born you after nine months, which is not in any medical book, if you sit in a medical book, they copy it from the Bible. And listen, doctors don't bring any revelation. They just discover what is already there. He told Eve that you, your mother is going to carry you for nine months. And that is what doctors are calling gestation period or I don't know whether manifestation or gestation. But whichever way it is called, what I'm trying to open your eyes is that we live daily in Bible revelation, but people can't see it. Even though you don't recognize God, you are living in his revelation. I don't know, maybe you were born after two years in your mother's womb. You'll be, you look very strange. But the normal one is nine months. So everybody who was born after nine months is in the Bible. You can't believe that one. In the same Bible, you take some portions out. So that same Bible that said you shall be the head and not the tail, and you shouted amen. It's the same Bible also says that one day, if you are not ready and you miss heaven, you are going to have your swimming lessons in the lake of fire. I went to a place, everybody's house has a swimming pool. And I told my pastor that we're working, I said, no, no, we don't try some of this because Kumasi, there are no swimming pools there. So I asked him, do you know how to swim? He said, no, no, no. The some of us, when we see water, we shift. So I told him that, oh, maybe I need somebody to train me how to swim. But I don't play in it like others play like fish. Oh, in my village, there's no water. Glory to God. Somebody pulled me under water one time. I said, my God, this thing look blue, but it can kill. So, you know you don't know swimming when you see water shift. Luke chapter 16. 
Jesus speaking. Verse 19. And there was a certain rich man which was clothed in purple and fine linen. I know you have a lot of spray starch in your house. <laughs> and fell sumptuously every day. Oh. There's nothing wrong about that. In fact, I want everybody to be rich. I want everybody to, to eat good food. And it's going to happen to you on this altar. And there was a certain beggar named Lazarus, which was laid at his gate full of sores, desiring to be fed with a crown which fell from the rich man's table. Moreover, the dogs came and licked his sores. Now, look at, this was Lazarus' predicament on earth. He wasn't so rich. He was almost a beggar. And yet, he has something that the rich man didn't have wisdom to have. He wasn't rich. So there are two types of wisdom. Wisdom to know God and wisdom to be big on earth. Some have caught the earthly wisdom. They are known everywhere. Everybody knows them. Their names are mentioned everywhere. They, they, when, 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 you, when you put the standard of the earth upon them, they fit into the highest echelon of society. But when you put the standard of heaven, they look like fools. So two types of wisdom. The wisdom to know God has been hidden from many people. But the wisdom to be big on earth, many are grabbing it. But from this story, you will know that the wisdom to know God is better than the wisdom to be big on earth. And it came to pass that the beggar died. Oh! Give me Amplified 22. You see something there? Now it happened that the poor man died and his spirit was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom, a place called paradise. Paradise. And the rich man also died and was buried. Two different things. One died. His spirit was carried by angels. I know on earth he didn't even have a befitting funeral. Maybe AMA buried him because there was no family member. After his dead body remained in Kuala Lumpur for so many months, they said he is a man's body. They carry him, put him under some back of car, drop him in Audome or somewhere. But when the rich man died, my God, they took him from Kuala Lumpur mortuary to 37 mortuary. They said that place is not enough. And they took him from 37 to rich hospital. They said that place is not enough. And some people said there is a special mortuary in Lashibi. They carry him there. People went to China to produce souvenirs for the funeral. Special chefs from India, China, Ghana were joined together to produce food for the funeral. Special clothes were printed. Not in a custom test house from Holland. And they distributed it. And they brought special singers. Shata boom boom, shata kukum. They brought all of them together. The Amatis and the Elkis, they joined them together. Very powerful funeral. And they didn't take him to any commercial cemetery now when you travel around the world one thing that the worldly people have now come up as special cemeteries for rich people right it's stupidity and foolishness once you die there's no special thing about you i'm telling you you are watching me i'm telling you that in case you are prepared that when you die they should buy you in a special place i'm saying that when you die your there's nothing special about your dead body you better wake up from the foolishness Number one, you don't even see what is happening. And they organize all these things. Come and see cars. Bourgeois. That's when they, you see the new casters. Last week there was a funeral. So, so, so was at the funeral. This person came. 
This person came. You see, these days, when they want to describe how powerful a funeral is, they give you a catalog of important personalities. My God. So some have even decided not to do funeral because they are waiting for COVID to be over. They like funeral so much that the simplicity of funeral is an anathema to them. They say, no, no, no. I'm going to bury my father, but the funeral there is not now. Because the funeral must be a gargantuan funeral. You know what they are doing? All this while they are still thinking about the flesh, the earthly realm. Still thinking about the flesh. All these things are fleshy things. Fleshy things. Things that do not count. But you see, what they don't know is that once they are making all these plans, something has already taken place. The person that is dead, his destiny has already been decided. The Bible says Lazarus was picked by angels. And he didn't go. Now what's something? You see, when you bury, you bury down. But when angels carry you, they carry you up. I pray for you today that the day you breathe your last breath, you will not be buried, but you will be carried. I say you will not be buried, but you will be carried. One was buried, the other was carried. Which one are you choosing? You want to be carried or you want to be buried? Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a joke. Let's forget about our designer cloth and the shoes we are wearing and the cars we are driving. The rich man was buried down. Why? Do you know the location of hell? It's in the center of the earth and it is down. Down. Anything, anybody that dies without Jesus, you go down, 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 down. You go down, 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 down. It's better to be poor and make it to heaven. But even with revelation, you can't be poor. If you, you see, so the man of God, why was Lazarus poor? Lazarus was saved, but he lacked revelation. But we will be saved. We will have revelation. <laughs> Lazarus didn't do anything for God. He just went to heaven. But we want to do a lot for God. The only thing said about him that he just carried him. But there is another dimension. You will be carried and you will be rewarded. I didn't hear amen here. I said, you will be coming. We are not just going to heaven. There's going to, be, there's going to be an award, an award section where men will be called. Jocelyn, and when they call you, you don't come. Something carry you. You see people flexing their muscles, you know. I'm a macho man. You are macho what? Something carry you. And you appear before him. A gentleman was saying that he's depressed. And he was saying, Jesus, 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 will you save me? So, in that state, he fell on his feet. Just to open his eye, and he saw the feet of somebody in front of him. To look up, Jesus appeared in the room. You see, those of you who have not seen Jesus before, when you see him, eh, the first thing that happens to you, this thing, how do they call it? It begins to buckle like that. You see, and brings you down. You see, people don't know what we are talking about. He is not just the son of God, though he is God. The glory is so much that you can't stand before him. It's today you can talk nonsense. Oh. The Bible says the first time he came as a lamb. This time, he's coming like a fiery lion. And the whole world will see him. Do the people want to push God out of cities and nations? We don't want God here. We don't want God here. You live in somebody's house and you don't want the landlord? You live in somebody's house and you don't want the landlord? Very soon your rent will expire. I say very soon your rent will expire. I pray that you will not be buried but you will be carried. Will you talk to three people for me? So I pray that you will not be buried but you will be carried. This is Jesus telling the story. It's not a pastor. There are two ways to die. Some are carried and some are buried. 
to everyone who doesn't know God will be buried by ordinary men. And this day they make the funeral so nice. Even those that carry the coffin will be dancing. Hey! They carry the coffin on their shoulder, they will be dancing. You know something? Most of the time, what the world does that? The things that are not important to God is what the world will be hailing. But the things that are important to God, they lessen it. May the Lord open your eyes. I say, may the Lord open your eyes to have revelation. The spirit was carried by the angel to Abraham, bosom, paradise. And the rich man also died and was buried. And in Hades, in hell, now listen to me. Why must you listen to what I'm saying? Because I'm reading the words of Jesus to you. This is not the words of a politician. In Hades, the realm of death, being in torment, he looked and he saw Abraham far away and Lazarus in his bottom. He was in paradise. So every believer that dies, you go to paradise. You go to paradise. That's the first person you meet, welcoming believers is Father Abraham. You go to paradise. And the man cried out, Father Abraham, have mercy on me. Send Lazarus so that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Because I'm in severe agony in these flames. Have you seen the word flames? Flames. So when you die without Christ, you go to hell. Look at the rich man begging for water. He didn't beg for food. He begged for water. What is telling you that in hell, the, the, the cheapest commodity on earth is not available in hell. So I tell people, to go to hell is to become the poorest man that ever lived. Not having a place to live is not poverty. Not having a shoe to wear is not poverty. There are people who naturally don't wear shoes. There are even many of them in Accra called something, something. I don't want to mention them. Real poverty is to be in a place without God. A rich man is begging for water. And he didn't beg for one bottle. He begged for a drop. Four things to avoid if you want to make it to heaven. Four things to avoid if you want to make it to heaven. Number one, money and greed game. Avoid the money and greed game. Money game, greed game. By all means, I must make it. By all means, if I have to kill, if I have to steal, I must make it. If I have to carry grandfather sugar daddy, I... No! That is greed for money. First Timothy 6, 7 to 11. First Timothy 6, 7 to 11. First Timothy 6. For we brought nothing into this world, and it is certain we carry nothing out. Having food and raiment, let us therewith be content. But they that will be rich fall into temptation and a snare, and into many foolish and hateful lusts, will draw men into destruction and perdition. 419. This, 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 this. For the love of money is the root of all evil, which while some coveted after, they have erred from the faith and pierced themselves through with many sorrows. So a Christian should not be greedy for money. Should not be part of money game. Kill me. I change figure. By all means, I must prove to somebody. Hey! It is the blessing of the Lord that make a rich. And for every holy healer, I decree the blessing of the Lord over your life. Be free from money game. And greed. Number two, worldliness. Four things you must avoid. Worldliness. Worldliness. Christians should devoid themselves from worldliness. You want to dress like an unbeliever. What kind of life is that? You don't need anything of this world. Because the Bible says they pass away. Worldliness. Don't be a worldly person. Be a Christian. Wherever you are, let everybody know you are one. You are one. You are one. First John 2, 15 to 17. First John 2, 15 to 17. Quickly. Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but is of the world. Oh, the world passeth away, and the last thereof. He that doeth the will of God abide forever. Listen to me. All the stars will pass away. All the systems will pass away. But the one that will do the, the will of God will abide forever. Number three, sexual immorality. Today, people's flesh is controlling them. Sleeping everywhere. 
I was uh, watching, is it BBC? And I saw they, they wrote something under BBC. YouTube blocks Nigerians preacher TB Joshua over his gay claim comment. I say BBC. Why did you become interested in the church? And it was just appearing. But somebody, somebody, TB Joshua cast out some demon of lesbianism and gayism from somebody's coconut. Cut out! And the people testify. They carry it on BBC. YouTube block him. YouTube, A tube and Z tube, you can block him. But the truth forever remains the same. Don't to clap. You better clap. You think we are afraid of somebody? These lesbians are demonized. These gay men are demonized. Only preachers understand. Politicians, stay where you want to stay, my friend. You think policies can deliver people? You don't have any news. It was just appeared under the code bar. Nigerian preacher, YouTube block. I said, thank God this is news. Oh. Thank God. So now the world wants to shut the mouth of the church. That we shouldn't speak. Now look at me and remember something. We are the salt of the world. You take the church out, the whole world will be spoiled. A tasteless, tasteless whatever. I want you to know. What the church is doing, no other institution can do. Serve God seriously. Parliament, they don't fast and pray. Jubilee House don't declare 14 days prayer and fasting. That's why Christians should be focused and stop trying to become this and become this. The job that God gave us. Jubilee House have never gone on so when I have never heard it. My God. My God. Talk to me here. You leave this one. You want to go and do what they are doing. I watch it many times. It pass again. Nigerian preacher. We know what will catch this people's attention. Somebody went to check the cast demon out of BBC carry it. Are you general overseas or general superintendent? You know that they are punishing the pastor. My God. My TV keep on casting them out. I cast them to that who cast them out. Anybody open his mouth. Your daughter says she's a lesbian. You catch her. Take her to the back. Carry a bottle of oil. Say today I will bath you in oil until these demons leave this house. No sense. Go to the Muslim world and come out of the house of a Muslim and say, you are, you, you will see. They will cut your something out. Jump! Don't, don't have such stupid feelings again. Somebody give the Lord a shout of praise. Yeah. Jude chapter 1 verse 6. Come out of my house. You say you are, get okay, what? Now look at something. And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he has reserved into everlasting chains under darkness unto the judgment of the creator. Even angels. Ask somebody, are you an angel? You better watch out double double. Angels went to chase girls. This is what this story means. I don't have time to go into it. Angels came down to change, chase girls. Some girls are so dangerous that they can fall angels. Turn to a brother and say, brother, watch out because you are not an angel. <laughs> oh, somebody shall deliver me, Jesus, here. Angels. So God kept them in chains. And in the last days, sexual immorality will move to IT level, IT level, IT level. I was sitting somewhere and I saw, I think, I think the guys are um, bodybuilders. There are two of them. They are eating and I'm sitting. Then 
from time to time, one will take his phone and show it to the other, and they will laugh. And this one will take his phone and show it to the other. So I said, let me look at what this bodybuilder said. When I check, it was exchange of ladies' pictures. They go to them, then pop, 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 pop. And this one was pop, 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 pop. Exchange of ladies' pictures. It's a new ministry. Somebody shall deliver me, Jesus, here. Hey. <laughs> Now, the devil is trying to exchange heaven with these useless things. Mr. Man, even if you follow all the ladies in town, one day your jackknife will not be performing. You better stop the nonsense. If nobody kills it, it will die by itself. Stop the nonsense and save Jesus. Hey. <laughs> Let's continue now. Verse 7. Verse 7. Even as Sodom and Gomorrah, these are the first lesbian and gay cities in the world. There's nothing new under the sun. Look at when you're new to be aware. It's a new lifestyle. Oh boy. It's not your, it's not that you are just repeating the stupidity of people. Sodom and Gomorrah, the cities about them in like manner, giving themselves over to fornication. Look at it. And going after strange flesh, that's lesbianism and gays, strange flesh. For a man to follow a man is strange. Strange man. They, now what we're going to, they are set forth as an example, suffering the vengeance of eternal fire. Finally, avoid what? Avoid what? Avoid lukewarmness. He is not hot. He is not cold. Hmm. Revelation 3, 15 and 16. You want to make it to heaven? Don't be lukewarm. Be hot. If you are on fire, be on fire. You want to live holy, believe it holy. I know thy works. That thou art neither cold nor hot. And thou art not wet nor hot. So then, because you are lukewarm, neither cold nor hot, I will speed thee out of my mouth. <laughs> talking to believers. Because here he was talking to a church. Are you hot or you are cold? Could you point your finger to somebody and say, Are you hot or you are cold? <laughs> lukewarmness. Those who are lukewarm will not make it. I believe in Titan, but I also believe in fornication. I believe in the spirit of prophecy, but the prophet must have side checks. <laughs> How can you have a lot of sheep and not use one for pepper soup? Eh? Man of God! But then when you pick microphone, fire! When you drop the microphone, water. You are neither cold nor hot. Sunday she will be singing in the choir. Friday she's in the disco. He say go sagratosa. He say go sagratosa. He say go sagratosa. Sunday he's in church. He will be. He will be. The same dancing for the disco. The same dancing for Sunday morning. My God. So because you are lukewarm, spiritually senseless, neither hot nor cold, I will vomit you out of my mouth, rejecting you with disgust. I God here. Yeah. Those who do these things, the Bible refers to them as dogs. Tell somebody, don't be a dog, please. Revelation 22, 15. Look at Revelation 22, 15. Amplify. Look at, look, look at what he said. Revelation 22, 15. Amplify. Very powerful scripture. He said, he said, outside are dogs, the godless, the impure, those of low moral character. God called them dog. Somebody shout, I'm not a dog. Put your hands on the floor. Say, I'm not a dog. Tell that your boyfriend to leave you. I'm not a dog. Tell the lesbianism to go. I'm not a dog. If you have low moral standards, he calls them dogs. 
and their sorcerers with their intoxicating drugs, magic arts, immoral persons, the perverted and the molesters and the adulterers and the murderers and the idolaters. Everyone who loves and practices lying, deception and cheating. I'm not a dog. So I'm a seed of Abraham. Thank you. Those of you who are watching us live, if you are part of the church, you can also plant your seed into the builders. A lot of people have sent us money online because we are building the same kingdom. Somebody's hand has been standing there very, very, very long. Ushers, I, oh, ushers, you can't see the hands that are up. A lot of hands. Move very fast. Move, move. Move like lightning. You don't have. It's finished. Okay. May the Lord be with you. <laughs> Tuesday, we'll bring more envelopes. Now, we can't close without giving opportunity to give your life to Jesus. I've already told you Jesus is coming very soon. He didn't tell us the time. It can be now, it can be tomorrow, it can be this evening. The only moment you have is now. The only moment, those of you watching online on television, in case you are not born again, I want you to, in your room, kneel down right now, put your hands on your chest. I'm going to pray a prayer of salvation right now. I want you to give your life to him. That is all that matters. What shall it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? So put your hands on your chest. And those of you in the temple who want to give your life to Jesus, lift up your hands and stand on your feet. You are in church. You want to give your life to Jesus. Lift your hands. Don't joke with this thing. You only have this moment. You don't have a lot of time. Only this moment is what you have. If you are in church, oh, and you have raised your hands, run and come forward. Come. Come and let me pray with you. Come. If you are in the auditorium, run, 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 run. Run. You know that if you die, you won't make it to heaven. Run. Run quickly. Our time is up. Our time is up. Long time. Run. Run. Church, can you clap your hands and encourage them? Men found life in their room. Men, you want guy, guy. It won't take you anywhere. The real guys are the born again ones. God bless you. God bless you. Come from everywhere. Come. 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 We are waiting for you. You used to go to church. Now you are no more going. Now, quite sorry. After the wedding, now the names are come. Run, run for your life. Jesus is coming. Run. There is no time. 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 Lift your hands. You are watching online. You want to pray the same prayer. Lift your hands to Jesus. Open your mouth. Everybody standing here. Say, Jesus. Jesus. I come to you today. I come to you today. I'm a sinner. I'm a sinner. Please forgive me my Please sins. Forgive me my sins. I receive you. I receive you. As my Lord. As my Lord. And personal Savior. And personal Savior. Come into my heart. Come into my heart. Dear Lord Jesus. Dear Lord Jesus. I'm born again today. I'm born again today. My name is written. My name is written. In the book of life. In the book of life. Now I declare. Now I declare. Jesus. Jesus. Is Lord. Is Lord. Amen. Amen. Please go this way. Follow this pastor. He's going to give you something. Let's clap our hands for them. Let's clap our hands for them. God bless you. 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 If today is your first time coming to church, you are sitting down. I want you to stand up. I want to pray for you. First time coming to church here. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you, Mama. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless all of you. God bless you. God bless you. God bless you. Those of you standing, lift your hands. I want to pray for you. I want you to know that once you have stepped into this place, your testimonies have begun. God is going to give you powerful testimonies. Ushers, can we work very fast? They are going to give you something. Write your name and your phone number. We are going to put you on our database. We we'll, we'll send you messages anytime there is a program. Anytime and we are going to be praying for you. Father, pray for all of them. Give them miracles. As they step here, let them have testimonies. Bless them. Every fire burning hot behind their backyard. Cool it this week for them. I pray for healing, miracles, signs and wonders. For every one of them, even as they came to visit, visit them in return. I bless them. I bless their life. I bless their finances. Let everything around their life be blessed. In Jesus' name, we pray with thanksgiving. And let everybody shout, Amen. God bless you for coming. I joined this church by a friend. And true that, because I was a dropper, so I don't have faith that maybe I may also be someone tomorrow. So after I was sitting there, and Daddy was preaching, saying, um, 
Certificates cannot take you anywhere. So if you have faith in God, God will open doors for you. And I keep on listening to the word of God. So as I was going to work, and my mother used to give me something to do in which I'm, I'm not qualified, but you always give me to do. So one day they didn't come and I did it. Then they had a meeting and they called me that comfort. I wanted to be operation officer for wow. the company. And I want to thank God wow. because I don't need When did you drop out of school? In 2009? Yeah. When you were in secondary school? Yes. And you've been in the house for how long? So many years. Yeah. And you didn't qualify for this position. No. And yet, as you came to church and heard the word of God being preached to you, okay. through that word, favor came upon you. Yeah. And you have been promoted to the position of what? Operations officer. Please, are you not excited about this testimony? What else has it all done for you? The second one is, as I came to church, daddy was preaching about tithing. So if you tithe, like it did, uh, it did add something little to the tithe, and all of a sudden it got a blessing. So I said, let me try and see. So I add 20 cities to my wow. salary. Then within one month, they increased my tithe by my salary by 60 percent. Wow. <laughs> so then I keep on, you see, lot of the wood chair, over guys over chassis. Then I want to continue and see whether. <laughs> so I did it again, and <laughs> so I did it again, and I then we didn't form a letter, and then they add forty percent again. Forty percent. So making a hundred percent increase. Yeah. I, ah, <laughs> I don't deserve it. How come? So the bonus that I used to get uh, in December, they double it twice. Wow. Wow. <laughs> So, that's another testimony. Yes. yes, add that one. Four. And the third one is, uh, as I always go to work, my company, the manager used to harass me and everything since 2018. So, I you know I'm not good in talking or something. So I don't, I just don't you mind. To explain yourself. Yes. yes. So one day, as we are having a meeting, and I went and, uh, as I was going something from there, let me use a uh, mantle to wipe my face. So as I use it, I've never been praised at the company before. So as I went, the CEO just stand up and say, let's congrats Comfort. He's been the worker, the best worker for the company. Let's congratulate the school dropout, the operations officer. Yeah. For he's the best worker in our company. Yeah. Will you celebrate the Lord somebody? What and the uh, last one is um, in our family. <laughs> in our family, it's hard for you to to be able to rent a room or to do something above wow. everybody. So I keep on listening to the words. So God, I want to do something because Daddy said you do things that even though people will say and talk about you. So as I'm standing here, I was able to rent two bedroom apartment. Wow! Wow! And uh, people, people try talking about me. Ah, this girl is some sugar daddy that rent the room for her. And I say, no, my daddy, my sugar daddy is God. Your sugar daddy is Jesus. He's done everything. And this and morning, that sugar daddy Jesus is going to minister to you. And through his servant, every burden, every limitation upon your life will be lifted. If you believe, shout a big amen to the glory of Jesus' name. Thank you. Bless you, God bless you, God bless you, God bless you. Lift up your hands, Father. Bless everybody. Empower us to fast tomorrow. Strengthen our stomach. Put something there so food will not enter. We are 14 days of power and glory. We expect you 5 30 tomorrow. We'll close at 8. It's going to be a glorious time in the presence of the Lord. In the name of Jesus. Father, thank you. Lift your hands. Let's share the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, love of God, sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us now and forevermore. Amen. Thank you for listening to this message. We believe your needs were met and every word kept you in closer fellowship with the Holy Spirit. Want more? 
find us on Facebook by searching Holy Hill Chapel AG or Reverend Kojo Boatenbempa or join our Supernatural Generation family. You can also subscribe on YouTube by searching Kojo Boatenbempa for our video messages to further boost your faith. We look forward to hearing your testimony through any of our social media handles on Facebook, Instagram or Twitter.